the teacher. And the next speaker is Lorenzo Fabris. He's going to talk about uh, one of the presentations on good machine learning. I have a of a specific tool, and in particular, I've been working on the user design. So, Okay, good afternoon everyone, it's me, Lori. Uh, today we're going to cover in this very brief presentation the outcomes of this study, uh, the major outcomes at least, why we decided to develop the multi-point link user adjoint optimization, why did we choose the diffuser, why did we go through this. Uh, the outline is the following, I'm just going to have you introduced uh, very briefly to how uh, centrifugal compressor works, why do we need to optimize the diffuser, what are the differences between a veinless diffuser and a vein diffuser. Then we're going to look at the single point optimization and multi point differences, how does it work, why did it work that way, numerical methodologies that we underwent, and then a couple of conclusions. So, uh, very briefly, uh, centrifugal compressor is a type of thermal machinery. Of course, these machineries are transferring energies to compressible fluids through the rotation of their color and they increase the pressure. Uh, they have lots of applications, specifically in these cases, it's not related to air engines, uh, just because a lot of people asked earlier. Uh, the main <clears throat> components of the centrifugal compressors are three the inlet channel that basically guides the flow into the impeller, the impeller that transfers the work to the fluid, allowing the increase in enthalpy. And the diffuser that helps us decelerating the flow, increasing therefore the static pressure. Uh, like I said, uh, the diffuser is placed downstream of the impeller. This is veinless, this is vein, basically, there's what we call in a very common way a blade in it, uh, but it's not definitely a blade, it's a vein, uh, more correct to call it that way. And like I said, it converts the flow's kinetic energy into. Uh, by infusing the flow into potential energy and so high pressure. Uh, the difference basically between veinless and vein diffuser is that if we can increase the efficiency and the, the, the pressure, uh, the static pressure at the outlet with our vein diffuser. However, like in the following slide, we are bonded in the flow path due to the incidence angle with the veins. And when I optimize with respect to this passage, I need to be very careful on my optimization uh, outlines. Otherwise, I might affect the flow so badly one or two points, or all the others in the compressor chart. My efficiency and my improvements are cannot even be seen, and actually, they might get worse. So, the incidence flow angle is the key point, and we might say that with a vein diffuser, we have an operating range that is narrow compared to a vein diffuser. This is very important, and why we chose to optimize with respect to different. Points in the compressor because we didn't want to lose efficiency on one hand, operating with optimization on the other hand. <clears throat> so, like I said, the aim of the study is to perform this multi operating point that joint optimization with respect to these two operating points. Uh, in last year, my colleague presented a study in this conference uh, with this reference CFD solution and SU2 solutions that's been validated this way. Uh, we selected operator point number two, uh, in this case, he, this one here, because there's no incidence on the vein, and the operator point number one, which is with very high mass flow rates, hence it's very close to choking. In this couple of sketches, I may just to let you perceive the difference in the flow path <clears throat> in that region. Uh, let's talk about a bit of the flow domain. This is the flow passage. We established periodic boundary conditions, so our shroud and blade are walls. Uh, it's not invisible, of course, it's a run solution, we will see. Inlet and outlet this way. Uh, this is the computational grid, it's a multi-block mesh. Uh, of course, this geometry was uh, generated and given to us by our industrial partner, Fine Energy Solutions, uh, from Switzerland. And this is basically how does it look. Uh, for what regards the mesh, we've been operating with 300,000, uh, which allows us to have a pretty good solutions, even though it could be a discussion on numerical methods and solvers with respect to the mesh density later on. Uh, in, this is the boundary condition definition. Uh, <clears throat> uh, like I said, the solution that I presented in the previous slide with the compressor map is kept as reference 
for the baseline design. Uh, I would like to point out that out of boundary conditions are indeed experimentally provided by our industrial plant. Uh, for what regards the inlet boundary condition, in this case, they were derived from the study, as I'm here selecting just the slides, I would say, of the diffuser, and uh, it's a numerical data, but further on, we're going <clears> to <throat> implement the validation with experimental study here. Uh, for what regards the solar setting, uh, we were, of course, trying a central scheme at first. Uh, it's always preferred. But JSD uh, was proven a bit stable during the computation. And also, I would say that we know that freezing the mesh density allows us actually to JSD to work much better. Uh, so this is a topic of discussion. Uh, <clears throat> as we selected an upwind scheme, row second order scheme, with the turbulence model SST, uh, we needed for 4,200 iterations in total. And just so you know, we pointed out, I used SC2 version 7.5.1. Uh, this is the map contour hour of the first direct solution that we had. Of course, the incidence on the vein generates some separation in here. Uh, there are other localized losses in here. Uh, however, the incidence in here was indeed one of the major sources of this bad, I would say, performances for these single operating points. Hence, we set up our adjoint optimization. Uh, we parameterized the blade geometry with the vein geometry with our FFD box. Uh, we carried out two kinds of studies. The first one, the single operating points to see indeed there was difference between multi and single point optimization. Uh, these are also the adjoint settings that were kept kind of the same compared to the direct solution. And by the way, to avoid dummy shapes and overlapping surfaces after SO2 deformation from SO2 that I just need to fix this plane, which corresponds to half a trial. So uh, roughly the upper and lower surface for non tool machinery users uh, that allow us to keep the plane within a physical meaningful shape. Otherwise, it would have turned into something that would have caused it flow path to be highly influenced by non-physical shapes feasible for a term machine case and non-accessible, not producible at all. Uh, also, we established the convergence, noticing that after the fourth iteration of our adjoint, new design was not performing better compared to the baseline design. And hence, the four iterations in this case were okay for us. Uh, the first uh, operating point uh, blade optimization. Uh, the, the baseline design in here towards the leading edge was the major shape deformation of the mesh. We can see at naked eye in here that the flow changes pretty much. And there's the total pressure loss variation of minus 13.61%. And then we increase the total pressure loss of the almost 14%, at least for this case. For the operating point number two, uh, you cannot see the shape deformation at naked eye because it was much, uh, of course, there's a zero instance, so there was uh, a lower shape deformation in terms of distance between the points. However, we still obtained a almost 3% total pressure loss variation. Uh, after, in here, I put this slide to let you show better, even though I made the blue screen, it's not helping. Uh, the baseline uh, means five session compared to the optimized. And I want to stress a bit this pressure loss analysis that we did in here. If we were to use a different blade design, so switch for each operating point, I mean, using blade design B for operating point one and blade design A for operating point two, my diffuser would, would perform much worse than the blade design. And hence, this is why we need multi point if I respect only, if I only with respect to operating point number one, then operating point number two, my total pressure loss is increased. More losses than my daily life. This is why we carried out this study for multi point optimization. Of course, for total pressure loss, average by area, it's P inlet minus P outlet minus P inlet average on the surface. So for multi point, uh, I 
we noticed from last year conference from Lisa Push, there was a multi point uh, equation for a formula, and this formula is derived from a source. So, kudos to that, uh, to that study, to that numerical study. Uh, basically, this uh, weighting coefficient for our uh, objective function with respect to each operating point and the objective function in this case average area total pressure for that single operating point and we want to maximize the total pressure on the output surface uh, this is a very simple flow chart so from the target simulation adjoint solution the gradient calculation as shown in the previous slide once the mesh is modified we can check if the shape is optimized with our graph checking if the active design performs better or worse than the baseline design and then we can decide if this is satisfactory or not this is the multi-point versus single point optimization for mid span cut on the blade uh, lots of colors and sometimes the whites can be overlapping with the red one but however i just wanted to show how the leading edge and trailing edge were affected especially the leading edge uh, between single point and multi point. Multi point is kind of in the middle, uh, so to speak. Uh, however, if we were, if we are going to check for the optimization losses uh, and check the evaluation on it, both operating points are performing much better than the baseline design because we decrease the pressure loss of almost 10% for operating point number one and minus 1.3 minus roughly operating point number two so hence we achieved what i was previously saying for two operating points we, were still, we are still having a total pressure loss which is lower compared to the baseline design so very quickly to the con conclusions uh, multi-operating point optimization workflow is at least for this case established successfully uh, it was done for a three-dimensional blade geometry that led to a loss decrease for each of the operating points that we mentioned. Uh, the computational cost will be, be higher of two optimizing and giving two solutions for each operating points, both adjoint and direct. And basically, that's what we achieved, and that's how uh, the study looks like. For the next steps, we are going to validate this study both numerically and hopefully experimentally. So it will be inside a multi tone simulation between the inlet channel and cover. We are going to plot the compressor map and then we're going to check the reference data and experimental data. Uh, like I said, uh, open to discussion on this JST scheme uh, behavior on the mesh. I heard some of you are uh, actually experiencing these too. Uh, however, we were able to manage for a second order scheme so that's not a big deal in this case but i would have preferred to have a central scheme uh, i would say personally that spurious oscillation in this case leading to dispersive error could be the source of this behavior but uh, i'm not sure i could not uh, research onto this i just you know, check the, the best solution for the software i could use uh, please give me 30 seconds to do some acknowledgements first of all the study is carried out as i mentioned with our industrial partner, Man Energy Solution. And I would like to acknowledge their support, their mesh sharing, data sharing, experimental sharing. So their help was incredibly appreciated. I would also like to thank Emma Oskaya, who is in the audience as Oli Burgat and Dr. Pini and Dr. Katman, who really helped uh, in the understanding of the adjoint uh, options and how the workflow was indeed. Last but not least, to Dr. Pedro Gomes for his overseas support. Uh, when we had bugs on the FT box parameterization, he just came across in like a couple of hours. And respectfully, we are thanking all these people present in this slide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Pedro. You see, yeah. uh, so the end, you said at the end you could have the duration as well. Uh, could you be any one of the 
I mean, uh, the new the user shape for the play optimization will be uh, part of the new the user zone in the free zone. Also, there's a lot of people, so I cannot make you send it back. But that's the aim of the move by zone, and it's with some help, with some time, it will be very, very nice to free time. And we have an actual user at the end, CMD, and we have to connect. I'm oh, sorry, experimental results on the phone. That would be the best for the issue. I will do that. Uh, you could be fixing each point for the different which I assume you have to start with. So you have only multiple points. Yeah. And that's the uh, Yeah, you could add more points, indeed, like you are suggesting, and it could be that. However, uh, if you add them, you are encountering a lot of much. Uh, and in terms of true machine, at least for our case, our knowledge of our workflow, it is always better to have maybe a less optimized, roughly optimized shape rather than dealing with very complicated shapes that are unfeasible in reality. So I distribute higher numbers of degrees in each direction, especially if it's late, like you mentioned, it's actually pretty long. So you might want to have that kind of thing. However, we also try to optimize only with respect to the edge and this is then the only other people also. However, in that case, you really are encountering a lot of fun shapes. And as you do that, really it needs a bit more filter in that sense. Instead, this was a study which was very free filter. The actual filter that I use are yeah, the edges. So that's the main reason why we need to do the upper boss degree. However, if we were to use the solver in a much further way, much deeper way, we could reach a solution with better degree of shape optimization, which is not done on other test cases that are not reaching here today. So, yes, it's possible, but you always need to check if this is really or what you're moving. I mean, this sense to respect the power rate, for example, is actually worse. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah